Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Dieter Kurtenbach, the time is right for Kevin Durant and the Warriors to reunite. Who helped whom? If you listen to the toxic discourse surrounding NBA basketball, you'd be led to believe that the Golden State Warriors were some scrub team saved by Kevin Durant joining them for the 2016-17 season. It sure seems that Durant needed the Warriors more than the Warriors needed him. On Sunday night, Durant's latest team, the Suns, were swept off their home floor by the upstart Timberwolves, who won their first playoff series in 20 years. Phoenix had gone all-in on this season, putting together a big three with Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. The Suns' issue? They overlooked that basketball is played with five people at a time. Also, that whole defense thing is pretty important. Going all-in in the Valley of the Sun resulted in a number six seed and zero playoff wins. And things don't look like they will improve much going forward. With a massive tax bill and having mortgaged all their draft picks for the next six years, the Suns like the Warriors find themselves in basketball purgatory. Yes, big questions are being asked in Phoenix, and big changes might be coming this offseason. Golden State just had a two-week head start on the same process. At least the Warriors have won not just a playoff series, but a title since Durant's exit from the Bay. For those keeping count, the Warriors have five playoff series wins to Durant's two since the 2021 season. The time is right for Durant to return to the Warriors. It's a shame it won't happen. To start, I don't think Durant, who bailed on Brooklyn 15 months ago, will be traded again this offseason. I expect the Suns to keep digging the hole they're in. Best of luck with that. Even if that prediction is wrong, I can assure you he won't become a warrior again. There's no world where Jonathan Kuminga, Andrew Wiggins, and all the draft picks in the world land you Durant, even as he goes into an age 36 season. And with both the Suns and Warriors looking down the barrel at futures of mediocrity at best and with a reunion far-fetched at best, I think it's fair to look back on the Durant, Dubs marriage and relitigate the divorce terms. You'll have to forgive me for living in the past, the future is too bleak. I'm also, idiotically, following the lead of inside the NBA and the social media space. So again, I ask, who received the most benefit in the Warriors-Durant pairing? Adding a wing who can score at all three levels like few others in league history and defend at a high level, too, turned the juggernaut Warriors who had won 73 regular season games the season before into back-to-back -back surefire champions, league runners, and arguably a team above reproach in NBA history. So much is still made of the alleged texts Draymond Green made to Durant following the Warriors' loss in the 2016 NBA Finals. The hysterical tall tale, no, Green wasn't crying on FaceTime from the Oracle Arena parking lot, set the narrative for the relationship. But clearly, there's something more to winning than simply assembling superstar players and rolling a ball onto the court. Yes, even if you have a preponderance of talent like the Durant era Warriors. Durant's Brooklyn Nets had a big three with James Harden and Kyrie Irving. That team won a single playoff series and was swept out in the first round in 2022. The Suns tried the same formula, to the same result one playoff series win and now a sweep. The 2017 Warriors might be the greatest basketball team ever assembled, but the 2018 edition went seven games with the Rockets in the Western Conference Finals, and the 2019 team lost the NBA Finals, Sands Durant, in six games. Blockbuster trade proposal sends LeBron James to Warriors, Jonathan Kaminga, Andrew Wiggins, Brandon Podziemski to Lakers. One NBA writer proposed that the Golden State Warriors acquire LeBron James from the Los Angeles Lakers this summer. Dan Favell of Bleacher Report proposed the following trade idea between the Lakers and Warriors, Golden State Warriors receive, LeBron James, must pick up player option, Los Angeles Lakers receive, Jonathan Kaminga, Kevin Looney, Brandon Podziemski, 
Gue Santos, Andrew Wiggins, 2025 first round pick, 2026 first round swap, 2027 first round pick, 2028 first round swap, 2029 first round swap, 2030 first round pick, protected numbers 21 to 30, the Warriors tried to acquire LeBron at this year's trade. Deadline. LeBron can become an unrestricted free agent this summer if he declines his 2024 to 25 player option with the Lakers. LeBron, the leading scorer in NBA history, appeared in 71 games for the Lakers this season. He averaged 25.7 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 8.3 assists while shooting 54% from the field, 41% from beyond the arc, and 75% from the free throw line. LeBron is close friends and shares the same agent, Rich Paul of Clutch Sports Group, as Warriors forward Draymond Green. LeBron also has a rapport with Golden State superstar Stephen Curry. I don't care that LeBron is about to turn 40, Favale wrote. He's still LeBron, one of the very few players with the juice to reopen the dub's title window. For salary cap dorks like myself, yes, this trade is legal. Golden State doesn't have to worry about brushing up against the second apron and its aggregation constraints if it waives Chris Paul's non-guaranteed salary. Fun subplot, would he re-sign at the minimum to play with his buddy LBJ? Since the Warriors are sending out more than $47 million as part of this package, they shouldn't have any issue squeezing Clay Thompson into a tighter payroll. That maneuvering would only get easier if the Lakers took on Gary Payton too, player option, though his defensive portability would have value to Golden State following the departures of Kuminga and Wiggins, he Warriors would be title contenders with Curry and LeBron leading the way. Curry is the greatest shooter in the NBA, while LeBron is still an elite all-around player, despite being the oldest player in the league. LeBron and Curry will be teammates this summer on Team USA in the Olympics. Curtainbach, Clay Thompson is flirting with other teams. The Warriors can't pretend he's bluffing. The Orlando Magic are making eyes at Clay Thompson. And reportedly, Thompson is making eyes right back. It's enough to make you wonder if the 13 year marriage between the Warriors and Thompson is on thin ice. On Monday, NBA newsbreaker Shams Charania reported that there is mutual interest between Thompson, who is a free agent, and the Magic, who have acres of salary cap room and need to add a veteran shooter this offseason. The pairing makes sense. Not as much sense as Thompson as a warrior, but sense nonetheless. And let me just get out ahead of the next bit of breaking news, there will be mutual interest between Thompson and the Philadelphia 76ers. And the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, and maybe the Thunder, too. Though OKC, my title pick, might not want him. There's going to be interest, because Thompson is still one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. He made 268 last season on 38% shooting. There's going to be interest because Thompson, despite being a peculiar and oftentimes insular guy, is still a four-time NBA champion with a trove of winning wisdom. And from Thompson's side, there will be interest in playing for other teams because he wants to be paid as much as he can. Giants fans should know this game. The big stars have used the Giants to drive up the price offseason after offseason. Bryce Harper, Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, the teams they actually wanted to sign with had to up their offers to match San Francisco, the mark. Warriors fans should remember this game, too. Draymond Green did the same thing, twice. His hometown Detroit Pistons were twice used to land better offers from the Warriors. And that's what I think Thompson is doing here. To a degree, at least. Thompson has never tested free agency in his career. And he really needs to work it now. The Warriors told Thompson what they thought he was worth before the start of the season, a reported two-year, $48 million deal was turned down with swiftness and some hurt feelings. To my understanding, the Warriors have not been at the negotiation table with Thompson since then, and Thompson, I would argue, did nothing to increase his value. So Thompson needs the market to do it for him. Don't get me wrong, 
Thompson is worth a lot to the Warriors. They have no reasonable way to replace him on the court. And off the court, he's worth even more. The big three might be on the downslopes of their careers, but they still sell a ton of tickets. Nostalgia sells. It can also be a curse. That's why I refuse to say that Thompson won't leave the bay this summer. Yes, I think he's currently using these other teams as leverage, but that doesn't mean he's bluffing. Thompson, after all, might need a fresh start. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Clay Thompson? Leave your opinion in the comments.